Welcome to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast, hosted by Craig Phillips and Jeff Torrey. Visit us at FantasyFootballProfit.com. And now your hosts, Craig and Jeff. Welcome everyone to the Fantasy Football Profit Podcast. I'm Craig Phillips, joined as always by Jeff Torrey. And today we move on with our rankings to quarterbacks as we do our early, early ranks yet for 2020. We'll redo these things, you know, as we get closer to the season, but this is going to be our initial ranks for the year and see where we have everybody. But before we do that, make sure you guys go check us out on Twitter at the FF Profit or Instagram at Fantasy Football Profit or the website FantasyFootballProfit.com, which you can see all of our rankings. And also, if you guys were part of the relegation leagues we got going last year, we had 25 relegation leagues. We have five different tiers of leagues. So we've started to slowly put those together now for the season. We started at the top. We started with the Champions League. We got everybody in that. We're working on the contenders is the next tier. We're getting drafts set up. So if you're a part of one of those leagues, be on the lookout, probably on Instagram for the most part. We'll be sending out invites, sending out, you know, asking about draft times as we go there. And I know for sure, I mean, there's no, we had 275 teams. Not everybody is going to come back for the next season or for this season. So if you are not involved yet with the relegation leagues, just keep an eye out. Uh, you know, listen to the show, wait, wait for us to talk about it. Check out Instagram because I'm sure some spots are going to open up and you'll be ready to get your spot in the league because it's a lot of fun. We have, I mean, 25 different leagues, which is kind of insane there, Jeff. 25 leagues. So uh, let's see. I can remember who the, we got what, the Champions League. I can't remember who the champion was last year. I'll have to shout them out next week, but be on the lookout for that. Maybe we even, if it goes to, maybe we'll add a, a six tier. I don't know, Jeff. Should we do that? Do more the merrier. Man, it's, a, it's a lot of fun. I'm so glad we finally got it off the ground. <laughs> Going up, moving well, down. There's if, a you, if, you can't if, let it slide. Yeah. That's what I love about it. If the interest is there, well, I mean, I'll I'll add another tier. I, I don't I, I don't mind. I drafted. I mean, probably twenty of those leagues myself last year. <laughs> Some of them like three or four at once. So that's a lot of fun, though. So you guys, we're in we're in each one of the leagues as well. So it makes it a lot of fun. So be on the lookout for that. So. Time for quarterbacks here. Let's go, Jeff. Let's start at number one. And we actually ended up with a consensus number one. So. Oh, well, okay. I, I wasn't sure. This I was the one changed I changed my mind. I did too. <laughs> so uh, I thought we were going to split because yeah. obviously, oh, can we agree to? I think the big thing with quarterbacks this year is I feel like tier system is so important. Yep. I feel like tiers are the way to go because. Look, these guys are so jumbled, and I'm sure we'll get to it, but when you're really picking them apart, trying to figure out who is going to do better this year and all this stuff, you don't really know. And it is so deep that you could make an argument for, I mean, really you can go about 20 (laughs) deep. I would say 15 I feel really good about. Our ranks are going to show the tiers pretty well. You'll see it's going to be kind of – it'll work out actually probably perfectly like you thought. So I'll say number one, yeah, we went Lamar Jackson. Okay. Um, I think last time we talked about this, I think we both might have had Mahomes number one. I did, and, yeah. Yeah, I did too. And I, I literally changed it today. And the more I thought about it again, I'm I'm trying to think, okay, why am I putting – I mean, Mahomes is – if you put Mahomes number one, it, no problem with that either. But Lamar Jackson is just a cheat code. He is. I mean, the running is just – it makes this guy just unstoppable. And I was trying to think, why am I putting him number two? Just because I think maybe the running can't continue like that. But wh- I, no one's stopped it yet. So why can't it continue? So I think he just has to be number one. But Mahomes, Mahomes isn't really even number two. He's just a 1B. It's 1A, 1B. They're, they're just, they're both great. I have take, I, the thing is, I don't know if I will take one of them necessarily. Maybe though, if Lamar Jackson might be a guy I actually draft. I don't like doing it necessarily, but. Depends on if it's the third round or not. He might be that good. He really might. Because, I mean, Jeff, he won you a championship last year. Yeah, he, without he, a doubt. He did. He truly won you the title. He, I, he won a lot of people titles. Let's yeah. be real about it. He was that good, which could go against my – he is a player that maybe I would change up my weight on quarterback strategy. Maybe I would possibly do it. He might be that good. Not second round. I wouldn't do it in the second, though. Um the third, it's it's possible. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna say I wouldn't had, do it. What if you had the number one pick? Would you do because you turn right around, right? If you had a last pick in the second round, would you actually? Mm. I mean, I guess you that's could get that's him third then, but that's tough because I don't know if I would want to do it that question, early. I mean, actually, 
But no, I don't know if I do. I don't know. It's it's, it's still very early. It's as early of a third round pick yes. as you can get. So it really, I, okay. It's always it's always going to depend on who's on the board. But I could see a scenario where I don't love everyone on the board, and it becomes okay. I might just take Lamar here. That I can see that, especially if maybe I go running back, running back. Maybe there's at that point if I went running back, running back, the wide receivers left at that point to me are all there's a lot of them that are similar. So it's possible. It's possible I do it. It really is going to depend on each draft, but this is the first year where I think I'm saying it's not a crazy move to do that. So I don't know if I will, but it's not crazy anymore. I mean, I don't know either, but I I totally (laughs) understand if you wanted to take either Mahomes or you want to take Lamar Jackson in, in one of these top rounds. I mean, you know, in the first five rounds, yeah, obviously Mahomes and Lamar probably go a little earlier, but if you did, I don't have any issue with it because I think that is a valid strategy, right? You you definitely have to plan around it. You have to have, you have to feel like you can get good quality running backs and wide receivers late in the draft, which there's definitely people to find, but it, it all depends on how good you feel about them. And really just to show you, Lamar Jackson was a cheat code. We said it a ton last year and we were huge fan and this is the thing we were huge fans of him coming into last year because we could get him so late and if you uh listen to our show you definitely know this at ad nauseum but thinking about this even more so we're a big fan of him before he was like the guy right now that he is number one overall we've put him over Mahomes. what is what is the drawback with him what what are you afraid of if you actually went out and got him that early it really is the fact that um Oh, there are a couple. Actually, no. There is a couple things. He runs. He does run the ball a lot. That could lead to injury. It, it honestly, it could. Uh, running quarterback. I mean, there's just more opportunity to get hurt. We we haven't seen him get hurt yet, and that could be a factor. But it, you know, it's always in the back of your mind. Or there's just maybe the defenses figure out how to stop the run. Again, there, that's all these teams are going to be trying to figure out. Is how do you actually? How do you stop Lamar Jackson? I don't know if you can. But maybe they kind maybe something is figured out, and I'm not saying either of those are likely. But those are just what I mean. The only drawbacks I could find are those two things. Maybe he gets injured and gets injured. And maybe they start to figure something out, which doesn't actually seem that likely to me right now. I think he's just that good. And I'm I'm with you too because I, when I looked at it, I mean Mahomes, I do feel is it, it's hard to say this in in some aspects. I think he's a little bit safer, right? Because yeah, I think that I, I get it. His throwing touchdowns are going to be there no matter what. He obviously has a good team that returned. His wide receiving crew is intact. Um, you know, he has Tyreek Hill. He has Kelsey. He has all the weapons you could possibly want. He has the new running back as well if he throws out of the backfield a little more to him. We saw what he could do with Hunt, right? You're just setting the the stage for everything that can go right for Mahomes. And then, But people did say, hey, Mahomes, you know, in standard, he had 417 points in 2018, right? People said... That can't be repeated. He's going to come back down to earth. Lamar Jackson actually outscored him. He outscored his 2018 production. He scored 420 points, very close to that. So by a few, he outscored him. And he did it by throwing a lot less touchdowns. And the big thing was he rushed the ball 176 times. Can that, can that yep. continue? And it feels like it can because I haven't really seen him take too many big hits yet. And he, he rushed for over 1,200 yards. His, his yards per carry actually went up. It was really funny to watch because 2018, when we thought all he could do was run, right? He's not ready to be a passer. He's, you know, this and that. He rushed 147 times in seven games. He got almost 700 yards and five touchdowns off of that, 4.7 yards per average. This, I mean, this past year, he did even better. You know, 1,200 yards with seven touchdowns and almost seven yards of carry. Because they don't know what to do because they implemented an offense that is amazing. Everyone knows this. You still have Ingram. You also have uh, uh, J.K. Dobbins, which we love. Um, Obviously, you add to that that wide receiving core. So even though Mahomes feels safer, I I put Lamar Jackson number one because I can't can't find a – I can't find a a negative. I really can't. And heaven forbid he does improve as a passer. Maybe he doesn't have to run as much. But he could improve as a passer, and and no one would even think it's anything crazy, right? Because, I mean, he was good, 
but he only threw for just over 3,100 yards, right, approximately. But he threw 36 touchdowns and six interceptions. So maybe, maybe that number goes down because I don't see the rushing touchdowns going down. I don't see him going below a thousand rushes or a thousand rushing yards either. So yeah, the more either. I think about it, I just, I can't figure out a, a reason why he shouldn't be number one. Yep. And that's exactly me. Pretty much why I moved him up to. So we got Lamar one, Mahomes two. We both went with Russell Wilson, number three. And, okay, and why is this so? Because I, I feel like I went with, uh, a, I just feel a lot more safe. That's what with it is. Russell Wilson than yeah. I do with a lot of other guys. It's it's he's just safer than the next guys. And it's not the flashy pick here. And not everyone always loves the Russell Wilson pick, but it's been like that I feel like for a, a few seasons now. Where we we seem to rank Russell Wilson higher and people don't ever don't always agree with it and it works out. I mean, remember in the first year we did the show, first year we were doing preseason ranks, I put Russell Wilson I was putting him higher than like most people and he ended up as the number one quarterback in the league in fantasy that year. And people thought we were crazy. He's actually been, let's see here, in 2014 and 15, he finished third. Last year, he finished third. In 2017, he was one. And the other two years, he was nine and 11. In his first two years, he was eight and nine. He's just, he's he's very consistent. And he's, but I mean, four of the last six years, he's been a top three quarterback. Four of the last six. That's pretty good. That's very good. And the, here's the knock. It's always going to be, well, Seattle just wants to run the ball, right? That's what people are going to say. And sure, they, you know, that might be right. He's not going to get as many attempts as some of the other guys, but he does it very well. I mean, he only had 516 attempts last year. That's not outrageous, but that's not a small number. But he turned it into 4,100 yards, 31 touchdowns, five picks. He's just good. And I think the um, I believe in the emergence of DK Metcalf this year to go along with Tyler Lockett, and I think that's just going to help him too. So I think it's a very safe pick. Now, will I actually end up drafting him? This is where you get to be this, maybe this range. I don't love the quarterbacks if they go higher, but if he falls, which you know what, even if he's ranked here and people think he should be, you know, he goes behind some of the next guys that'll be on our list. Even if people rank him, you just know there's people that fall in love with the next group and Russell drops, which then maybe I do get him. Oh. Yeah, without a doubt. And, and I, I like that point because a lot of people will say it's a run, run first offense. But you said the exact same thing last year. And they ran yeah, the ball a exactly. ton, and he finished third overall. Yep. I mean, yep. he is just a very good, high-quality quarterback that has a high percentage completion rating. He throws a lot of touchdowns, not a lot of interceptions, and he does run a little bit, right? I mean, you can't discount it. But last year, you know, 4,100 yards, 31 touchdowns, five interceptions. He's just been like that for his entire career. He doesn't go that crazy. The last three years, 34 touchdowns, 35, 31. So even with that high volume of running, he still gets it done. And that's why I love him so much. And I, I he, he has more stability in his offense than a lot of the other guys that we'll talk about. Um, and yeah. that's the thing too. I, I think you, you nailed it when you, this is what I was talking about when I was saying that you have to draft by tier. Because even though I think Russell Wilson is the third best quarterback, I would rather have him than these other guys. I, um, you know, as soon as those Lamar and and uh, and Mahomes are off the board, or if they're on the board, knowing whether or not I'm going to take them, I can figure out where everyone else is going to go because there's a huge gap between when I'm willing to take them and when I'm willing to take the next group of guys. And if they start going, I don't really care, right? And Maybe they grab Russell, maybe they don't, because, you know, these guys start going into a very, very close competition with yep. one another. And why don't you throw out the next one? Because so here we go. going to be very close. Well, okay. We have a three-way tie. <laughs> fourth. All right, that's funny. Our fourth, fifth, and sixth are a tie. Okay. So it and works well, out. All right, it's, who are they? Might as well name all three. It's Dak Prescott, Deshaun Watson, Kyler Murray. So you went Kyler four, Deshaun five, Dak six. I went Dak four, Deshaun five, Kyler okay. six. So we just switched up. Yes. Um, and, and it, but before they, I, I know people are going to be angry about the Dak thing, that the fact that I had him, uh, what do I have him, six? But yeah. Yep. I, I know they're going to be angry. I know he finished off really, really well last year. Um, but, hey, Kyler and Deshaun, I mean, Kyler, okay, maybe that one is a little bit uh, getting ahead of it, but they added Hopkins, right? And then Deshaun has just – pretty much been better than Dak for the most part the last how many years. So I, I know they lost Hopkins, but the guy just gets it done. And I just feel a little more uh, 
safe with him because Dak has done it for one year. And I, I really do believe that his touchdowns could actually go down, even though he has three amazing wide receivers. You still have Zeke and you have you have all this pressure. I, I don't know. Well, see, you know, this is a – I moved Dak up higher than I had him. Just uh, That's a, that's a t- today I move again. I switched him up just a little bit. And actually, I've always had Kyler at six. I just switched Dak and Deshaun. Mm-hmm. And I think it's just because I think – I believe in Dak's weapons a little bit better. I guess that's the only thing. But they're, these guys are so close for me. And Kyler, though, is the one that I'm actually disappointed Kyler got so hyped up for this year. I'm, I'm honestly, I'm really disappointed. Oh, in that. Without a doubt, he, he is <laughs> a guy, and we talked about this. He is yeah. a guy that I, I said I wouldn't, I wouldn't draft. And yeah. people were like, why in the heck wouldn't you draft Kyler Murray? It's because yeah. I already know where he's going to go. And I yeah. know in this tier – He's going to go before I'm willing to put that draft capital behind him, even though I think he's going to be very good. Yeah, it, it's just it's it, this is how it's going to play out, and he's going to get overdrafted. But I mean, I love the player. I just am not willing to do it right now, and I don't know if I'm willing to get any of these guys. But Dak is actually ADP and and um, expert consensus is number three. He's actually ahead of Russell Wilson. In, in he's up right there, now. man. Yeah, yep. and I, I get it. But even last year, I, I mean, I, you look at his numbers, right? And and last year, he was great. He really was. His completion percentage is always pretty high, right? He ranged from 62 to 67. And last year, he threw the ball 596 times. He threw the ball a ton. And you still have Zeke there. But with even almost throwing it 600 times, it, you know, he hit 30 touchdowns with 11 interceptions. And that was his best by seven touchdowns so far since his yep. rookie year. So, he, you know, he's had Amari. He's had Gallup. He's had good wide receivers with him. Uh, I know that this year will be the best. But it does make me question, you know, where is his ceiling? And last year, kind of the perfect culmination happened. He did finish third, but Mahomes was hurt, you know, and uh, Tom Brady will be on the I, There's – there's just so many things that occurred for him to become number three that I really think Zeke is still has to be the, the main focal point if they want to win. Because I mean, look, he went eight and eight last year. It wasn't like they lit the league on fire. So that is why I don't know why, but in my mind, I shouldn't say, I don't know why I do know why those reasons exactly. But in my mind, I do think that he is a little bit on shaky ground as far as fantasy. I think once again, he'll be fine. He's a good quarterback. He has three good wide receivers, but I don't know if that will be the game plan. If he could throw that many times and only only hit 30 touchdowns last year, which isn't a small number, but still. Yep. Yeah, so this is what, though, this is where you talk about tiers. I'd rather just wait and pick the last guy in the tier, kind of. That's where I might be at with this. Um, if I'm going this tier, I might wait. I'm personally probably waiting. Yeah. But um, Deshaun, we didn't say much about Deshaun, but people are going to be down on him a little bit because no DeAndre Hopkins, but I think he's good enough. And he, I think he still has good enough wide receivers to make it work. Brandon Cooks, Will Fuller, you know, I think he's, I think they're good enough that Deshaun Watson can make that work into a good fantasy season. I'm not, I'm, I mean, I'm really not that concerned. I'll be honest. I'm think he's, I think he's good enough to still be a, you know, top five type player. I, I think he is. I think he's just, I think he's good enough. So I think, yeah. I think and Brandon I really, Cooks will surprise people. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I like the addition of Brandon Cooks. He, he's not Hopkins, let's be honest, and we all know this. But you do add a running back that can catch the ball a little more, um, even if we don't think he's going to be what he used to be. You have Brandon Cooks. He's a very solid wide receiver. And then if Fuller could stay healthy, that would be a huge, huge win for them. Um, But on top of that, he also scrambles. He runs the ball, and that's how he kind of picks up, you know, this top five uh, quarterback ranking because every year he comes out and he has, you know, he flirts with 500 yards and five touchdowns. Last year he had – uh, just over 407. So, you know, those are the kind of guys that, that do well here. And, and they really do add to their, to their stock when you, when you can scramble and say Hopkins isn't around. You know, I don't think that necessarily uh, will drop him too much. But it is why, you know, comparatively, uh, you know, I didn't flirt with the idea of putting him uh, too much higher because I yeah. think, you know, you kind of know what Deshaun Watson is right now. Very, very good. But, um, you know, he has to kind of prove he can do it without a D-hop. All right, let's go to number seven. And we both put Josh Allen number seven. And Josh Allen is, I mean, the running ability is what puts him here. Really, that's what it is. And Yeah, I, I would say this is a 
do, do you think Josh Allen, do you think this is a, he's still in that tier? Or do you think that this would be the next one? I think it's the next one. Okay. So, I agree hundred percent. And it, and it's funny that I just got done talking about the running ability, but exactly what you said. This is why he leads off that this arena where you can, this tier where you can really pick a lot of guys and you can make up a reason why. But what would be the two reasons why you would put him here? So, I mean, running ability is honestly ends up being the top reason because as a quarterback, he's he's only, I think, okay. He has the, he has the, like Mitchell Trubisky vibes to me in a way. In that way, not not maybe all the way there, but without the you know with the running, so he gets nine touchdowns last year running the ball, so that just keeps him fantasy relevant, keeps him you know up there. And then the other thing I love is they added Stephon Diggs, yep. and I do think he's good. I think Allen's good enough that he's gonna. I mean, he's gonna throw the ball all around the place looking for Diggs. It's it's gonna be frustrating at times if you're if you're an Allen if Allen's on your team and he's you know just throwing the ball wherever and maybe not being accurate because I mean fifty eight percent completion percentage last year is not you know that's not really where NFL quarterbacks like to be these days you know but I, for fantasy this guy makes it work and you can't discount that he ended up as what the number six I think quarterback last year. And he's going to get all the opportunity in the world to keep doing this. And I think he's just going to put up fancy numbers. And it, you know, it might not always look pretty, but it's going to turn out well for your fantasy team, I think. There, you know, I he has more um, volatility, though, and he might have a bad week or two. But for the most part, he's going to, you know, help you out. Yeah, perfect. I mean, that was reason one and two. I mean, right. yeah. you, you increase the number one wide receiver and the guy can run. Yep. So he is going to have some big weeks, no doubt about it. But that is also why, yeah, I mean, you outlined perfectly why he doesn't make it into tier number two, yep. because he, he does have a, a lot of ground to make up. And overall, he's not a great quarterback. So I know people will hate that as well. He, he finds a way to win. Good for him. But overall, you know, when yep. you're ranking quarterbacks on pure skill and he just wouldn't be there yet. All right. So next, you know, I'm going to group this next group into a, a tier in a way because it's the veteran tier. Here we go. We'll do the next five players. We got, this is eight through 12. Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers, Matt Ryan, Matt Stafford, and Tom Brady. They end up eight through 12 for us. So Brees is eight. He was eight for, let's see, eight for you, nine for me. Then Rodgers came in at nine. He was eight for me, 11 for you. Matt Ryan is 10. You had him 10th, I had him 12th. Stafford tied with Ryan. I had him 10th and you had Stafford 12th. And then Brady is also tied with him. You had him ninth, I had him 13th. So they're all kind of grouped together here, you know. They're all they're all there, and I mean, okay, Drew Brees. I mean, both, so we got two forty year olds here, right? We got Brees and Brady in their forties. Both though, but I mean, Brees really wasn't slowing down. The guy's still, you know, great. Has Michael Thomas to throw the ball to? I don't know if he has, you know, the top level anymore, but he's going to be really good on a week to week basis. Yet, Aaron Rodgers. I mean. I'm not going to say he, he hasn't been bad, right? His numbers are still actually pretty good, but it's not really, it's not Aaron Rodgers like it was for fantasy before we was throwing 40 touchdowns. So last year he had what? 4,000 yards, 26 touchdowns and four picks. That's a pretty good season for an NFL quarterback, but fantasy, it's not what we came to expect before, but are you, you had him lower than I did here. So by three spots, it just, would you really pick Matt Ryan over Aaron Rodgers? Come on. We don't like Matt Ryan. Yeah, I, mean, I don't like Matt Ryan. I mean, you, it, it's kind of true. I, you know, I don't really like Matt Ryan all that much. Um, but if I'm just going off of numbers, what worries me about Aaron Rodgers, I would probably take a flyer on Rodgers above him. So I guess I would have to switch that out. Um, and and th- I guess that's my thing, though. If, if you're really like putting a gun to my head and say, who's going to have a better season? I think Matt Ryan might be a little safer, honestly. He has, and, and but I would, yeah. I might wait and then grab Rogers later because you know I, I don't think it'd be that much, and I think I could figure that out. So, I, it's kind of hard on here. I would say I put him at. I think he will outscore Aaron Rodgers right now by a couple points. I, I don't like what is going on in Green Bay. Yeah, Aaron Rodgers. Hey, he is a wonderful quarterback. Even last year, after a, a performance we don't usually we don't like to see, we you know he kind of fell off. He was still ninth at the end of the day. He is very durable. He, he does have an okay team. And this year, I was thinking it was going to be better, right? You, you should have Devontae Adams. You should be able to put together that wide receiving core a little more. But then this draft happened, 
and they drafted another running back, uh, kind of doubled down, like, hey, we're going to be a running team. They drafted a, a backup quarterback. So there's one of two things that can happen here. There is either Aaron Rodgers goes on a revenge train and he throws and he makes everyone look dumb, right? And I could see that happen. He is as good as he could be. He is unbelievable quarterback. Or Green Bay forces this on him and he, you know, kind of goes into a place where, you know what, they're going to trade me, you know, get rid of me. I don't want to be here anymore. And then it's just the fighting starts and everything falls apart. And I, that is why I'm afraid to do it because I think it's 50 50. I mean, yes, he could be a great pick, but I also see this where he could completely fall off the map because yeah. it, get me out of here. I don't need to be here anymore. You guys disrespected me. We were here to win. And all of a sudden, you guys are, you know, we're, we're not on the same team anymore. So, and, and you know, I, I think a lot of feelings, hopefully, it's not hurt and, and they can figure it out. But that is why he, he ended up in number 11. Um, but I do have to say, all these guys, I mean, you're right. Um, hey, Drew Brees, Brady, Ryan, and Rodgers are all, you know, they were elite at one point. And what I like about Brees is he's safe. You know that he'll probably end up in the back end of the top 10. Yep. That's why I have him in number eight. That's pretty much what you're drafting him for. And then Tom Brady is a very interesting one because I don't think he's safe necessarily. But the weapons, but man. Where <laughs> do you see his ceiling and where do you see his floor? Well, that's the thing is what exactly did he fall off or not? Or was it just the offense? Did he not have the receivers? That's the thing we can't tell. It's he obviously fell off from a numbers stand, but the, the receiving group wasn't there. He wasn't throwing the ball to anybody. So maybe he truly hasn't fallen off and which is kind of um almost unreal being almost he's going to turn 43 in two months before the season starts. Honestly, he can be a top five. He could be a top five quarterback. It's not a crazy thought when you have Mike Evans and Chris Godwin and Gronkowski and OJ Howard. And I'm probably forgetting people, but he has people that he has a lot of guys to throw the ball to. And the running game is still just, it's just what Ronald Jones and Keyshawn Vaughn. It's not I mean, amazing. They're not going to be a running team. So, right. There's no way they're going to be a running team. And even, okay. He was his down seasons again are 4,000 yards and 24 touchdowns. And that's with throwing the ball to no one. So he has top five potential, but there's also the uh, you know possibility that, you know, he is 40, he's going to be 43 years old. We've never seen anybody play at any kind of elite level or, you know, even really any kind of good level. I don't even know who we've seen play at 43 years old. So, I mean, it's it's kind of unprecedented, and it, it I don't even we we just haven't seen it before. So it could all of a sudden just hit that wall, and he's done. I mean, Peyton Manning hit that wall and was done. I mean, he obviously had other issues, neck issues, but Peyton Manning did that about four or five years before Brady at this point. So it, he could just hit the wall and drop off. Or he could be a top five. He could go anywhere. Honestly, it, it it's hard to say. And that's kind of why I put I end up dropping him to thirteen below these guys just because of more uncertainty. But he also has the best weapons. So yeah, I, and he does. His weapons are undeniable. <laughs> I mean, they really are scary. And the last couple of years, he's been in the teens. And my big thing is here: it's the unknown. We have not seen him throw a lot of deep balls in the past two years, for sure. I don't know. And you know, my thought was his his arm strength is starting to go. I have to believe it because of his age, but I don't know. Can you last out a year? You don't have to be the biggest arm. If you're throwing to, you know, guys like Mike Evans, you know, you just have to be able to put it up top. Um, So I, it does worry me a little bit. He will still be very functional, but I do wonder if the line in Tampa, I know they're going to try to protect him the best they can, but but New England, I mean, they just didn't let him get hit all that much. Last year, he took 27 sacks, which is probably a little more than he's used to taking there. And compare that to last year when Jameis was in Tampa Bay. He took 47. And I know Jameis is not the same quarterback as Brady. Brady gets rid of it quicker. Jameis is kind of a gunslinger, all that stuff. But, you know, what what starts to happen if he takes a hit here and there if if they can't get the run game going so they know they can just blitz them all the time it is worrisome to me for that reason as well that's why I didn't 
I didn't hype up this guy. I didn't put him up way ahead. I have him number nine because some games are going to look really, really good. But I do have that that feeling in the pit of my stomach like, is it past the prime? Is this the Lakers basketball team when they try to put all the old oh, guys yeah. on it? <laughs> that, that's kind of what it feels like. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope for the best. But right now I'm not really willing to draft him yep. very high because of that reason. Yep. And then um, the other guy in this group, oh, we've got Matt Ryan and, and then Matt Stafford. I said Matt Ryan, he's just he's good some years and other years he's not as great, but he has Julio and Calvin Ridley to throw the ball to. Do, so. You know what I, I love about this guy, though? I, yeah. I always laugh, and for the past probably six years or so, my joke has been he's on a cycle, and one year he'll be really good, the next year he'll kind of fall off, really good, fall off, and it has hold, held true. It's <laughs> kind of crazy. It's unbelievable. Since 2013, in standard scoring, where he has finished in fantasy as a quarterback was 15th, 7th, 19th, 2nd, 15th, 2nd, 11th. So there this year go. it should be good, right? <laughs> and I don't have any reason why to doubt him. You have Kelvin, you have uh, you have Julio, obviously. You have um, – well, and who did they add? Um, did they uh, – at tight end, I'm sorry. Uh, Hayden Hurst. Yes, thank you, Hurst. And I, I really do think, uh, he obviously, he's not going to be Hooper, but I think Hurst is a, a solid play. You know, so maybe I, he I'm could glad be Hooper, that they though. got him, but you also have Gurley. Like, it yeah, could be kind of a right. rejuvenated offense. So we'll find out. A lot of guys have a lot to prove on that team, and I, I wouldn't go out of my way to get him. But I think this year he, he's going to be a solid pick. But the biggest signing they had was definitely Laquan Treadwell. So. <laughs> yeah, you know what? Uh, I would love for that guy to finally do something. Oh, uh, man. I picked him in the first round of Dynasty League. <laughs> oh, that was not a good decision. But, hey, what do you what do? you do? But, um, <laughs> all right, let's see. And then Stafford. You know, Stafford was playing great last year before he got hurt. And he has Galladay to throw the ball to, has Marvin Jones to throw the ball to. Shoot, as hopefully, you know, TJ Hawkinson can come, you know, really take a take a step up shoot he has uh geronimo allison to throw the ball to now so yeah that, that did not work out for me in green bay <laughs> yeah maybe it'll work out in detroit so i highly but doubt that one i'm just i'm a fan of pet picking stafford though because he let's see he's right now 13th uh in adp which that's great i, I like that i'll yeah. pick him a lot of t- i'll end up with stafford a lot because of that actually i mean I really do, and I mean this wholeheartedly. I, I would love to get Lamar or Patrick, or, and, and any of the guys in the middle would be fine if you get them at you know a position where they fall. And there are so many of them, you're going to get one. But I have so many people that are in the next tier for me that I don't even mind having these guys because I think they're bounce-back candidates, and Stafford definitely leads that category. And it really, I mean, let me pull this up really quick, otherwise I'm going to slaughter it, but... Um, if you went by 2019 and not by how many games they played, by what their average per game when they played was, Matthew Stafford was fourth. Yeah, he was, he, he was, he was only great. behind Dak, Deshaun, and Lamar. Well, he only played in eight games and he had 2,500 yards and 19 touchdowns. He was on pace for basically 5,000 yards, 40 touchdowns. Yeah, and, he, and really, I mean, he he was playing really good football, and he always has a relatively I mean, I feel bad for the I2 because he goes through so many coaching changes, and I know I'm feeling like a, sounding like a homer at the moment, but he really is a talented quarterback, and he has flashed fantasy relevance, right? So, obviously, he's been here before, and I think that this year, I think last year he would have came back and he would have been a top 10 play for sure. I think he probably would have ended like seventh or something like that, you know, just seeing what happened with the Lions. I think that he could – quite easily move up the most out of anyone in my on my draft board i think that him as a qb has the most ability to to jump up like ceiling wise even with the talent around him which is you know hit or miss but still not terrible i mean you look at the players they have uh obviously you get swift in the backfield um that will help you have hawkinson as the second year tight end which if it's if the first game was any indication even though he didn't do anything after that uh, you know, he could be a very viable option. And then, like you mentioned, Galladay, Marvin Jones, and then if anyone else, like, comes out of it. So I really like him. But then um, along with these, and I don't know where they ended up, but uh, let me know if I'm, I'm too far off our list now. But uh, Ben Roethlisberger, 
Baker Mayfield and Ryan Tannehill are all guys that I have my eye on as well because you can get them for nothing, and they're going to be very solid plays, I think. So, yeah, they're going to be coming up. I'll say the next one first before them is actually Carson Wentz. Who okay. you had, we, this is, we didn't have a lot of differences. I guess this is one of our bigger ones, and it's five-spot difference. I had him 11th, you had him 16th, but I, I get that. It, I mean, he has the potential to be up there, but I guess you're you're more concerned with, I mean, in, there's injury concern, and he's been injured a couple times, so I can see that, but I I don't know. I, I, like, I think he's going to play well enough, but he, I mean, obviously he hasn't lived up to what he did in 2017 before that injury. Before that injury in 2017, he was, I mean, he was an MVP candidate. He was that good. In 13 games, he had 33 touchdowns and 3,200 yards. So last year, he only had four, he played all 16 at 4,000 yards, 27 touchdowns. So I guess it wasn't, you know, spectacular. But Yeah, he, f- he finished 10th. Yep. Right? So I mean, but my thing with him, I, I really like him. I was, I was all aboard it when he was coming back from the injury. But I do feel like his his wide receiving core is is kind of just collapsing around him, and they they got some young guys that I think will be good. But I think they'll need a year or two. I don't think it's like plug and play necessarily, game in game out. I really love uh, obviously Miles Sanders, so I think you could you could find a little bit more of a run heavy offense. And when he was that good in 2017. Their red zone offense was all throwing. I mean, they threw every single time, and he was throwing dimes. I mean, it was pinpoint accuracy to a younger Elshon, and uh, and you know, Aguilar was having an unbelievable year. So it's just not, you know, it's not the same team, and it's not Wentz. Um, you know, he just wasn't as pristine last year. So I'm really hedging my bet because I think maybe in one more year he could get back into my good graces and be in the top ten. But right now, you have so many other good quarterbacks that um, you know, I would rather take the risk on a even a Baker Mayfield than than going with Wentz. And I know people would say the sacrilege, but you you look at the teams and hey man, uh, talent is talent, and it, when it's there and you can keep your quarterback upright, they'll put up points. And then after Wentz, Baker is came in fourteenth. We both had him fourteen. Um, I don't think that's crazy at all, but for some reason we we get we've been getting a little bit of uh, you know pushback from our Baker Mayfield rankings this year, which I don't think we're we're not nuts. Four fourteenth is jaded lovers, man. I mean, he, he was, hurt a lot of people last year. <laughs> he he played much better in the second half of last season. He really was starting to turn a corner there. He started playing a lot better, but yeah, he started the year terrible, and he needs to get those interceptions under control. Twenty one picks last year, and. I he he really played a lot better though towards the end of the year. I'm hoping that translates. I'm I'm banking on this team still being good. I mean, he has Odell Beckham, he has Jarvis Landry, he has now Austin Hooper. He has a great running game. This offense should be good. And 14th, not you're, if you draft Baker Mayfield, you're not taking any risk. So no worries there. There's no risk involved with this. So that's a there's just no risk. There's no risk. You're you're fine taking him here, right? Absolutely. And you have a new head coach and the most important part, or like for me, he took 40 sacks last year. I mean, he, he couldn't, he did not look comfortable in the pocket and you know, so it it just, everything fell apart for him, but they redeveloped the line, right? You went out and you got a tackle that is a a veteran, that is a, a good tackle. And then you went out and you got a very top end rookie tackle as well. And I don't know who's playing left. I don't know who's playing right because I think they both were a left tackle or a right tackle. I can't remember exactly. But they they look really good, and it's going to be already uh, much improved. Even if the rookie looks like a rookie, it'll be an improved line. And I think they'll be able to give him a little more time. And you give, you give Jarvis Landry, and you give Odell Beckham, and you give uh, Hooper, and you give <laughs> Najoku, and you knowing you just go through the line, you give them an, a second extra to get open. One of them will get open. I just think he had to get his mind right. You got to stop doing stupid commercials, and you have to go out and win win ball games. <laughs> right, exactly. Next up, Roethlisberger came in fifteenth. I, I had him sixteenth. You had him thirteenth. Um, it, yeah, it's just it's Roethlisberger. He is. He, it's, hopefully, he's healthy. Hopefully, he can come back from you know his injury and be good. Um, we hope he does because that would definitely help Juju. And that's what you want to see. But I, I don't know what to think about Ben right now. But he's always one that he can be a lot better than this. But I just – he's older, coming off an injury. Where will he be? But, again, anybody in this range, there's no risk involved. So take your chance on whoever you want, right? 
Next up, uh, Kirk Cousins came in 16th for us. You had him 18th, I had him 15th. He was a lot better towards, the, you know, the first, I think it was the first four games last year, he was really bad. And then he, he, you know, he turned a corner and became pretty solid. I think he was about, he's probably a top 10 quarterback for the remainder of the season after that. I, we, he doesn't have digs anymore. Can Justin Jefferson step up? That's, I guess, the only worry. But again, this is a good spot. I'm, I might end up with Cousins on a team or two as my second quarterback if I go for one. This isn't terrible. And actually, he was tied for 16th spot here with with Tannehill. So you like Tannehill a little bit better than Cousins. A, a lot a bit more, yeah. <laughs> Tannehill was better than Cousins in the second half of last season. I mean, Tannehill was better than a lot of people in the second half of last season. So I, I thought we, you know, as we're going towards the end of last season, we probably thought we might have him ranked higher. And then the whole Derrick Henry just taking over everything thing came in. And it kind of changed it up a little bit, but... You can't, th- I mean, hard to believe they're going to run Henry into the ground like that again. You can't do it all season. They only were able to do it towards the end of last season, right? It just can't be a constant thing. Yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense. If, if you want to have any chance in the playoffs, you know you're going to need him. So you got to be able to throw the ball as well. And he was able to. I mean, if we're going by average points scored in a game, standard once again, he was ninth. I, I know he played 11 games and... Uh, you know, you, you have to get your, your feet under you. So when he really started going, him and A.J. Uh, Brown, they looked really good. So well, I, I really like Tannehill. I think that he is another guy that if I ended up with him because I really found value in other places and I just waited until the very end, I would be stoked to get Tannehill and say, hey, he's my starter for now and we'll figure out from there. I would be fine with that. So after he took over as a starter, he took over – in week seven as the starter. So I went and pulled up the stats from week seven on points per game. Tannehill would have been the third highest points per game from week seven on when he became a starter. Lamar Jackson was one. Uh, Drew Brees would have been two. And then Tannehill would have been three. So he was better than I mean, Mahomes in that stretch. He was better than everybody, but Jackson and Brees. That also shows that Brees was really consistent and good last year. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, Tannehill was that good. I think, he, you know what? We might be underrating. I might be underrating him even more. This could be a steal. Yeah, I mean, he, yeah, I think he is. But I think, and that's my whole point with this. I, unless you have a strategy to go out and get Jackson or Mahomes, I don't, I don't see a world where I just do not wait. I wait right. and I wait and I wait. And usually around, you know, round seven, eight, usually there's a point where I'm just like, oh, man, I don't see anyone else I really yep. like right now. I might as well go out and get a, a quarterback I can depend on. You can grab one of these guys. But if I kept finding guys and I had to wait until the very end, I guarantee there's going to be someone that I can make a startable quarterback, especially yep. like Tannehill is definitely one. Roethlisberger, I like the upside, but he'd probably scare me a little bit to have him as the only quarterback. Um, oh, yeah, for sure. Yeah, Tannehill, even Tannehill and Stafford for sure. Um, I would have no issue whatsoever, and I would be super excited about like uh, Baker Mayfield, even though I know that him, him and Roethlisberger are kind of on the same page where it's like, all right, what's my backup plan in case I'm wrong? <laughs> yep, exactly. All right, and the next one, we'll just run through these quick, and there's not as much, I guess, to talk about, but Daniel Jones is 18th for us. Actually, it was Daniel Jones and Jared Goff are here tied. Jones could – he's a player that could take a jump up. I just – He could. I just don't he trust could. it. Right I, don't, yeah, I don't trust it yet. I, this is He could definitely take a jump. Goff, you know, maybe he turns it back around. He just wasn't very good last year. Um he has it in him, I think, but he just last year wasn't his year. Garoppolo's twentieth. I think this is kind of where Garoppolo is to me. I don't know if I think he's kind of settled in. in the, he'll be like a fifteen to twenty range quarterback. Yeah, and, and they, you know he yeah. is he is what people fear that Russell Wilson would be yep. in a run heavy team. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You know, exactly. Yeah, and that's that's kind of what Garoppolo is at the moment. He'll probably the, end up better than this, but that is where I would draft him. <laughs> Uh, the next two are young guys. We got Drew Locke. We got Joe Burrow. I mean, Locke has a lot of weapons now. Burrow he doesn't have as many. We just don't know what to think. I mean, he could be. He really he could just come in and be great. But I never know what to do with rookie quarterbacks. And then Drew Locke's almost not a, not a rookie, but almost essentially a rookie as well. Yeah. It feels like so. Th- just don't know what to do with these guys. Then it's after that we went Rivers, Minshew, Darnold. Darnold's the, to me. He's I have him down here. 25th or you have him 25th I have him 24th so we've came in 25th it's possible that something you know he flips a switch and becomes really good I'm kind of intrigued by it I don't necessarily I mean I there's no reason to think it, it's going to happen but he was a highly drafted quarterback who 
maybe everything you know comes together. If if Bell is you know if he becomes Le'Veon Bell of old and it could work out. I'm not going to say it's crazy, but I'm not going to draft it like that. Then after that, it's just the the guys I'm not even thinking about: Bridgewater, Carr, Fitzpatrick, Haskins, Tyrod, Trubisky, Stidham, Foles. Those Tua, those kind of guys. There we go. There's really nobody in that range I'm thinking about after Darnold. Maybe would be a flyer on a team, right? That in a, in a 12 team league, maybe you throw if you want a second quarterback, but. Oh, sure. I mean, there's a couple. I'll be honest. If I'm going to pick a young guy um, and as a flyer, Darnold would probably be, you know, on that list. But for some reason, I, I keep gravitating towards Drew Locke. I, I liked what I saw from him last uh, last year, you know, the very few starts that he had. But he was able to win games. They definitely put people around him so he can succeed. And, you know, he has good arm strength. He, he just looks like the, he plays the part. I don't think the game is too big for him. So I think he could take a big step up. You definitely have, you know, rocky games because that's just the way it is. But uh, I, I think that he could surprise people. And if he ended at the back end of the top 10, I think that would be kind of his his ceiling. But I think that is possible for him. I, I think that is how talented he is. And then um, Joe Burrow is interesting because uh, he's going to be overdrafted compared to what he's ranked. And I'm not saying it's wrong because he could be really great. We don't know that, but. So we had him, what did we what I say? We had him 22nd. You had him 22nd, I had him 21st. And his consensus rank is currently 21st, but he's getting drafted 17th. So okay. that's... Well, even yeah. even 17th here, you know, he's a second quarterback at the end. People just yep. want to throw him on their team. I think he might go up a spot or two from that. But, you know, I have no problem with him being your second quarterback. I think that's a good second quarterback. That's the kind of guy you want as your second quarterback when you're taking yeah. a chance. If you have a, if you're decently set, I mean, I think you're, no matter what you get, I think you're set at your number one quarterback where you feel decently confident because Baker's not going to be your number one. So everybody, it's pretty much like, you know, Stafford and Wentz and above, and you should be oh, feel okay. But yeah, there's, there's again, so quarterback this year, you know, if you don't get Lamar or Mahomes, if you don't want to take that chance and get one of those guys, then just wait. I think you just wait. It's, I mean, again, it's all value. It's all worthy. Get him in the draft. Some leagues you get people wait on quarterbacks, and then you can get a good quarterback earlier, you know, be, you know, in this fifth, sixth, seventh round and feel okay about it. You just never know. Some leagues it, you see him fly off the board early. It's just every, it's hard to say where to draft him because it's every league is different. And you never know. But Lamar, I don't know. I, don't know. I might be taking Lamar. I have a feeling, especially because we do the relegation leagues, I'm going to have Lamar in a few relegation leagues. Oh, I can, right. I'll take I'll take a chance in those right. and take Lamar. So if you're going to be in one of those leagues, you better beware. I'll probably draft Lamar. Uh, here, here's the here, what it comes down to. How okay? So you already answered for Lamar. You said you would take him in the third round. That would be the absolute earliest you would do. What about Mahomes? What is the earliest you would take him? It it probably honestly, it has to be fourth. Okay, I think fourth. it's fourth. It, okay. it it depends on what it depends on what's around. It it has to be a spot. Where I'm on the board and I just don't love the players. And there's enough of a, there has to be a group of guys that there's like five or six players maybe that I'm fine getting the sixth or seventh guy even than the first guy on the list. So why would not take the talent, wait around and get the guy that's left? That's where I'm at with that. And that happens a lot in those rounds where there's just groups of players, there's tiers of players. That's why it also benefits to have like a tier system, figure out where your tiers are. Cause if you have a group of guys left, and you're like, okay, there's a bunch of the players left that I feel decent about. Might as well just take the quarterback here. And it goes the same for the tight end, where maybe you do take the chance on like, you know, Kelsey and those kind of and Kittle and those kind of guys. If you know there's enough players in a tier that you're fine with, and you can wait around. So I think third for Lamar, fourth for Mahomes, and then the rest that has to be D has to be sixth, seventh at least. Okay. And so out of the next cup few tiers, right? Probably tiers two through three who's a guy you're looking at that you're kind of like I, I hope that guy keeps falling so I can get him who's the guy you feel really good about you know there, I won't say there's anybody I feel like that terribly confident in I would there's, again it's going to be Kyler where I'd love to get Kyler but there's just no way he drops there's just I just can't see it happening mm -hmm. but I guess his ADP right now is sixth that's not that's maybe maybe he's not going to be maybe it's not going to be fourth like I thought it was going to, or even third, like it was maybe trending towards. 
if he really is like the sixth quarterback, because that's the that's the furthest he goes, because then it goes to Josh Allen, and he doesn't he doesn't go below Josh Allen. But if it becomes a draft where that sixth quarterback is one that drops further, I'm cool with that. But there's just no way, right? Kyler's not falling. No, he won't. I mean, I can't He's imagine just not, him falling. But that's the thing. There isn't anybody the else. Like Deshaun Watson, I I don't I'm not worried about Deshaun. I, I would. What, what, is, what is Kyler's ADP right now? He's it's his ADP is sixth right now at quarterback. Yeah, she's sixth quarterback off the board. Hmm. It's Lamar, Mahomes, Dak, Russell, Deshaun, Kyler. I'm actually very surprised by that. I, I, I don't too. think that's where it will end up. No, I I think Kyler's going to be third or fourth. Honestly, I really felt maybe maybe I guess I I wasn't maybe anticipating Dak jumping in in there. But I could see Kyler going ahead of Russell Wilson for people. Um, Russell Wilson just gets overlooked. People just don't fall in love with Russell Wilson in fantasy. I don't know why he's been great, but yeah. it just always happens. But I, I most likely, I would say in the my serious leagues, I'm going to end up with you know it's going to be like Stafford. <laughs> I just have feel like the right. Stafford Rogers, you know Breeze. Who, who, who's the worst guy? Like who's the cutoff on our list right now? When we or we'll go with yours. The cutoff yeah. is the last quarterback you have ranked that you would feel okay drafting to start. Probably Brady, because for Bra- me he's thirteen and Baker's okay. fourteen, so it okay. has to be Brady. I'm, I think I have thirteen guys I'd be okay with right now. I mean, I wouldn't see. I have Baker ranked ahead of a couple of guys who I would actually. Feel, I'd, I'd probably feel more confident starting like Kirk Cousins or Tannehill just because, you know, they're safer. Baker has the risk in him, big risk. He has the upside too, but I think he's 13. I think I have 13 guys who I would feel pretty good about and, and you know, have no problem starting, at least at the start of the year. And then you figure out who else there is and, you know, make your moves that way. But I think, I think there's 13 guys. Tom Brady's my cutoff. Good old time. Yep, I think that's where it is. You know, I don't really anticipate getting Tom Brady on many teams, but oh, I think he'll go high. Well, what's his ADP actually? So I, I feel like Brady's, he'll go higher. His ADP is twelve right now. So mm, maybe I'm like wrong. I mean, I feel like I feel like that it's is early low though. Well. It, it's early. So like I said, it was it was Jackson, Mahomes, what it went, Dak, Russell, Deshaun, Kyler, Josh Allen shows up at seven. Then we had um, Matt Ryan is eight. Aaron Rodgers is nine. Drew Brees is 10. Then what do we have? 11 is, I'm missing somebody. Oh, 11 is uh, Wentz. And then 12 is Brady. Okay. And then Stafford's 13. And 14 falls to Baker, actually. And then, uh, yeah. Tannehill is 18. And Roethlisberger is 19. For ADP? Yeah, Daniel Jones is 15. ADP right now. Okay. Yeah, I think Tannehill. I, I mean, yep. I know that he's not the flashy name, and you kind of work and you do it two years in a row. But I feel like he is the one that is being the most undervalued right now. So that's showing. Like, so if Tannehill's eighteen, and then you have actually um, Daniel Jones and Joe Burrow going ahead of him, Tannehill becomes a good value. He come. He's going to become a very, very good value. I I would have no. <laughs> I mean, this is just the way that I work. If I'm going to wait, and I can probably grab another quarterback, but if I could grab Tannehill at the very end, and that means I can take a uh, risk on uh, Baker, which right. I would love to do, yep. or or Stafford, or even depending on who falls, you know. Well, I mean, it depends. Maybe if Josh Allen falls further than, you know, Josh yeah. Allen's not going to be overdrafted, I don't think. Yeah, and but I he's can't imagine be... Tom Brady falling. Yeah. But if he did, you could grab him and just say, ah, I'll, I'll see. And Tannehill will be safe no matter what. Yep. So, um, Tannehill's going to be a good option for yeah. that second quarterback to be safe. So, all right. There we go. There's quarterbacks for you. Um, next week, we're going to end it up with with tight ends. We'll finish our ranks before we start getting into some of the you know preseason. We're in June now. We're two months away from drafts. That's it. Drafts are s- starting soon. So we're going to start getting into some more individual players again and start getting you ready for the season. But God, it does not feel like it's that close. No, it, it <laughs> is. Not, it is. Dude, this whole thing is throwing me. <laughs> it is so bizarre right now. It is. It's it's coming up there. It's just been a it's been a crazy um year so far. Yeah. I think well, it's it, and it might be the first year we might have to put pause on. I don't know if all the guys will be able to travel for our main league. So right, yeah, it, it might be at home. We might have to do like a, a draft special or something. It's gonna be it's gonna be different. But all right, Let's talk to you guys next week. <laughs>